When hoisting or dowsing your mainsail with full battens, it's sometimes a good idea to use the all-slip slugs or slides or the slugs by Ron Stan. Full batten sails can sometimes jam, and these slugs and slides can sometimes help prevent that from happening. Both of these slugs help to distribute the load at each one of these batten points. They're all nylon, so they slide easily. The Ronstan uh, slug also has ball bearings or a wheel attached to the bottom side to minimize the friction. Most full batten sails have a batten end protector near the luff. Some of these batten end protectors require a special order shackle, others do not. We don't recommend using a shackle, but webbing instead. The webbing gives the opportunity for the slug to twist. Shackles do not. And so, in lieu of the shackle, we're going to use webbing. This is a three-quarter inch polyester tubular webbing, and we really recommend this for almost all of the batten end protectors. It makes installation easy, and no special order is needed. We're going to use one of these slugs as an example. All that's necessary is to first gauge how much webbing you need for each installation, then cut it with a hot knife to avoid any unraveling of the webbing. We'll use double-sided seam stick or basting tape here to help prevent the webbing from sliding once we have it in position. We highly recommend the use of double-sided tape to make your projects always come out easier and more accurate. Once we've installed that, we'll just uh, lay the other flap of webbing on top of the other. And then we'll take a number 16 hand needle, pre-wax twine, and a palm, and we'll start to insert the needle through the center. We'll leave enough trailing pre-wax twine at the end so we can uh, loop it underneath some of these loops. We're going to create figure 8 loops here. We're going to do several of them, at least uh, three on each side. So we're going to loop that around this one side, and then we're going to come around the other side, insert the needle through the center of the webbing again, locking it in place, and then we'll uh, tighten it up and be sure to uh, that trailing twine is tucked under this loop, and we'll continue doing that at least, again, three times on each side. So three complete figure eights. There's one complete figure eight. Make sure it uh, lays on top of that webbing as well. Tighten it up. So we'll do it three times now. And here we are coming around again. I think you have the idea and we're not going to show anything more. We're going to cut it off here and show the finishing steps. Okay. After at least three passes of the figure eight have been done, then we'll take that uh, twine and we'll tuck it in one of those uh, uh, loops that we created on the back side of this assembly. Then I usually like to push it through the center again and then tuck it on the top side as well. Now, when you get through, when you're doing this, and the more you insert the needle through the center, the harder it is to pull it out. So sometimes I'll take pliers to pull it out. Now, I'll tuck it again on the top side as I had explained earlier. And then we'll simply take a hot knife and we'll cut that twine and then we'll melt it so that it creates a nice button. To create this button, we simply want to take the hot knife and melt the ends of the twine so it makes a nice button. And leave about a quarter inch or a half inch, melt it. And then after it's cooled a teeny bit, don't let it cool too long, just take your thumb and push on it and that creates a nice button that will not come undone. Do that here for that other trailing leg. There we are. That's it. That's one of the installations and the installation that we usually recommend for a batten-in protector on a full batten sail. Looks good.